But in all seriousness, rubber bands are a really good way to see if your trigger mechanisms work before you actually put the limbs on. And as you can see, mine does. Now we're gonna cut out a strip of steel that can go all the way from one edge around the bottom to the other edge. Then once you've got it bent into a U-shape, take some rough sandpaper or a file and then put some horizontal scratches on the inside of the piece. And then from there, you're gonna spread some epoxy onto here and slide this piece on. And here's the part where I realize you can only use two clamps. A little disappointing, but life goes on. So we're gonna be putting another one of these things on the other side, obviously. This is how it's all put together. We've got these little clamps, and as you can see right here, I've cut off the top jaw on both of these clamps so that you can get the rivets into there. And then what I did up here is I took another little piece of that steel, I put it going across these, and I put this uh, half inch by half inch by sixteenth inch aluminum angle stuff. It's just a little bit of this stuff. They're five inches each. And then I use some eighth inch rivets to attach all this stuff together. You just drill through it and pop the rivets in it. And then for the axle, if you recall way back in the day when I was talking about fender washers, I'm pretty sure, uh, I talked about how occasionally I'll go to the hardware store and I'll find this piece that I just kick myself about because it's like this little piece of something, this little uh, fitting or whatever that is just exactly what I've needed for my whole entire life and I just never knew it existed so I was never able to buy it and I was just like killing myself trying to make it at home. Uh, that's exactly what happened here. If you've watched my videos up until this point you know that I've just been using like a bolt and a nut and then a lock washer and then another nut. It's just not a very pleasant looking thing. Uh, but last time I was at Home Depot I found one of these things. It is called a binding post. Pretty much, it's exactly what you need to make uh, this exact piece. It's just this uh, flat post thing. It's got this little screw or bolt type thing that goes into the other end. Uh, and it's just, you know, completely perfect for this. So here's how we do. Because this is aluminum and it's really, really thin, you don't have to use an angle grinder or anything. You can use a hacksaw or in this case, you can use some tin snips. then your edges might be all wonky and bent. So just squeeze both flats in a vise to straighten them out. Now, I could give you guys the exact measurements of all the cuts that I'm gonna make on these things, but the thing is, the chances of you finding the exact same clamps that I'm using and the exact same pulleys that I'm using and everything, pretty much next to nothing. So what I've done is I've just blacked out the areas I'm gonna clip off, and then you guys just clip off these same basic shapes, but adjust them to the size of the actual pieces that you're using. So here's just a slightly better view. This side, this side. The binding post is 3 16th, so we're gonna drill some 3 16th holes right there. And quick tip, I found that the 13 64th drill bit fits the 3 16th inch binding post better than the actual 3 16th inch drill bit. So for the wheel, what we're gonna be using is one of these Everbuilt clothesline pulleys. We're going to snip off this little end piece right here. Actually, we're gonna cut it off with an angle grinder, and then we pull out uh, the post from the other end, and the wheel should just fall out. And actually a hacksaw works just fine as long as you squeeze it in the vise like this so that more of the post is exposed. The whole setup goes together like this. And there was a little too much wiggle room so right in between there I put one of these little brass washers. So I put these two clamps side by side and I hooked up that whole arrangement to the clamps and the piece of steel that I just cut out. Clamp this together, now I'm gonna drill the two holes for the eighth inch rivets, and once I've got those drilled out and riveted, then I'll do the same thing here. Now we're gonna clamp the clamps with some clamps and use the clample clamper to clamp the clamps off. And then right here on these dots, we're gonna drill some one inch holes. Now take a Sharpie and use it to mark out where you're gonna drill one of your holes on the body of the gun. Then once you've got one riveted, go ahead and drill through here and pop the other one. And then to take off the big clamps, because you're gonna wanna do them both at the same time so that the little clamps don't end up bending the aluminum limbs, uh, I just tied this piece of string around the body of the crossbow and around the limb, and from here you should just be able to take these clamps right off. And then because we have this extra space, because I wasn't able to put that third clamp in there, I'm just gonna drill through here and use it to put some screws in just in case for whatever reason the epoxy isn't able to hold that metal piece on. Now that we got all this stuff screwed in we're just gonna plug up these little gaps here. I'm just gonna use some little three millimeter plywood rectangles. Quick tip I would suggest that you guys drill these holes out before you do this riveting up here just because it's kind of awkward trying to slant the drill and get the drill bit to catch instead of just walking around all inside this thing. Uh, so after you get those holes drilled out we're gonna take our little uh, plywood rectangle and wedge it under there with some wood glue. 
You just put the glue right here, and as you slide this piece in, it'll spread the glue out. Then I clamp it up in the vise for about 10 minutes. Then I use the hammer to set the screws a little bit just so they're easier to work with, and then I'm gonna put them in the rest of the way with my drill. limbs are attached, we're going to work on the loading mechanism. For this, we're going to use a 3 16 inch steel bar. Double the length of the crossbow plus 7 inches is going to be the length of the bar that you're going to cut out. Now measure out the center of the bar and bend it into a U shape so that both ends can fit down these tracks. And once you've got the bar bent, we're going to use the vise to put a couple of hooks at the end. Now when you're making this bend, make sure your hand isn't way too high up on the bar, otherwise the whole bar is going to end up curved. Keep your hands really low so that the bar stays straight, but you just get a couple of hooks right at the end. As you can see, aside from the main bend right here, there's also a bend right here that sort of curves upwards. What this does is when you draw the loading mechanism back, then the downwards pressure from the string helps to keep the bars inside the tracks. Now we've got to make the spring that holds down the arrow. Usually I use a piece of steel for this, but today I'm going to experiment and try some PVC. Cut out about this much of the PVC and then draw a line straight down the side of it. You can use a speed square to do this. Then from there use some kind of rotary tool like, I don't know, an angle grinder to cut down the line and from here we're going to use a heat gun to do all the rest of the forming. It's kind of hard to explain so I'll just show you me doing it. And then I used my Dremel tool to cut the spring down the middle so that the trigger mechanism could move around freely and also so that my arrows can have a third fletching sticking out of the top, so that's pretty cool. And I also trimmed out the front end of the crossbow so that the strings that go underneath won't be rubbing up against the frame of it way too much and that'll prevent them from uh, wearing out too fast and uh, for there being any more friction than there has to be preventing the uh, arms from opening up as fast as they can. <laughs> And now I cut into the washers on both sides and this is how you string it. First you're going to take whatever kind of rope you're using. I'm using this paracord. You take a knot in one of the ends of the paracord and uh, like I said before all these measurements are going to be completely different so the length of the string you're using is also going to be different. So after you've figured that out uh, and you've gotten the right length then you just tie a knot in both ends. You're going to slide this into here and see the knot prevents it from going through. This comes around the other end, and it's going to go underneath the bottom pulley. Then it comes around to the other side, goes underneath the top pulley, and then from there it goes over the top of the bow. It goes over the top pulley, comes out from under, it goes over the bottom pulley. You pull it all the way to the other side and drop it into there. And that's how you string it. Now I'm going to take some Bondo body filler and use it to fill in these little gashes so that uh, I don't have to file this down anymore because it's kind of pushing it as it is as far as weak spots. Uh, so I'll just glop some in there and then I'll sand it round.
With this all rounded out, that's really all there is for this build aside from the color. Now, I think after all my wood stain projects, I've earned myself a little bit of spray paint, so I'm gonna go with the black and red color.